got the urge to say burn no more. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation under rock. The Daddy Rich song where you're going after the, the you know, fake pastor preacher type of guys. Yeah, the tele evangelists. Yes. Yeah. And we've seen that sadly play itself out in so many ways over the years. <laughs> yeah. But why why was that such a compelling topic for you guys? Because that came out of car wash. Remember Daddy Rich and Car Wash? Mm-hmm. Rich, that's it was it was just that. Yeah. Okay. It was, it, it was the rap version of that scene from Car Wash. Even, you know, because at the end of my verse, I actually said what the, what the brother at Car Wash said, why don't you tell him how you got so rich, Daddy Rich? Right. That's all Car Wash, man. Okay. Always got to shout out Bill Duke, Abdullah. Yeah, yeah. Abdullah, Bill Duke, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, what happened to where you guys didn't end up doing a second album on Ruthless Records? Actually, we started recording a, um, a EP. We just gonna put out an EP, and then um, um, Marquis was having a kid, and he just, you know, became disenchanted with uh, with the business, and you know, he just wanted to raise his family, and um, we kind of went our separate ways, and and uh, odd, oddly enough. You know, maybe a year or two later, he winds up with Lynch Mob. You saw, you know that, right? Yes, Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes. Yup. So and, you know, I did a, I did a couple of songs over there with Blood of Abraham on Ruthless. Yes. So yeah. what? We'll go in the order you mentioned them. How did Malky end up getting with uh, Lynch Mob then? Well, you know, we all come, we all know each other, man. We all know each other, Taft High School. So, uh, you know, when JD got locked up, Cube, you know, it was probably some some some, some record con- contract. Like it was, it was probably contractual. Like you know, the Lynch Mob may may have owed another album to Priority or or whatever, and so they I think they had to fill that slot. And you know, Marquis was cold, and, and Cube called him. So why at least, did, at least that's the story I get from Marquis. And why didn't you just go in as well? I didn't I didn't, I didn't get the phone call. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm saying, why didn't Malky say, hey, come let Yuma do a verse on whatever song? I, you probably because I was working with Blood Abraham or something. Okay. In, in those days. I probably wasn't available. Gotcha. Now, Blood of Abraham is literally the opposite end of the spectrum from <laughs> the lynch mob. Right. In every single solitary way you could be. Right. So how did you uh, end up being cool and working with them? Well, you know, my first rap group was with uh, DJ Epic. DJ Epic produced uh, Blood Abraham. You know, so kind of that thing. Just, you know, be, being friends with people. That's always a good thing. Mm-hmm. So then what what was happening in the next several years after that? Um, you know, I tried to do some, I, 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 you know, I recorded some soul stuff, tried to get signed, <laughs> couldn't get a deal. And then I just kind of became disenchanted with the with the uh, with the uh, music, man. And I, and I went back to Chicago for about 10 years. Hmm. And, what, and and got a you know got a trade. What what did you do? What was your trade? I was a glazer. That's glass, like you know, putting in putting in glass and in, in high rise buildings and shit like that. And and what made you pursue that career path? Well, I just I needed a job when I got to Chicago, and and I got a job at this window company. And they had a, 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 a training program. So, you know, I got to training and started doing that. I mean, I no longer do that now. Um, I'm a union grip here in Hollywood. I work on a lot of TV shows and movies and stuff like that every day. That's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, union's nice, man. So that being said, on 
when Bone did For the Love of Money, did they, how did that work business wise? Did they call you? Did they tell you? Did it just, oh, no, they didn't tell us anything. We had to fight for that. We had to fight to, to get our, uh, name on that as, as writers and get our, and get our shares and stuff. I mean, I still get, get a little royalties from that to this day, um, quarterly, but that was a fight, man. It took some years. Mm. Yeah. They just, they just did that. Eric just did that. Mm. Like, like we were never like officially like, and I don't know if anybody's ever uh, uh, officially just like, dropped from a record label like i don't know if like when a record label drops you like do they call you and tell you that because in my experience i didn't get no phone calls it was just like ruthless is not putting out any more records for me like it just that was what happened you know what i mean Hmm. so that's what happened and you know i look up and man in 1995 bone recorded that song so then you wouldn't have moved you wouldn't have been in chicago yet right i was not no okay so given the easy ease health situation at the time did you get to talk to him and see him or was it all i didn't okay i didn't because you know what i was going through my my own uh issues what was going on with you doing crystal meth okay mm-hmm. that's serious yeah, which is one of the reasons why I uh, moved to Chicago. To get away from L.A.? To get away from it, yeah. Hmm. Well, congratulations for being able to get over that. Oh, yeah, man. That was 1998. Probably clean from that stuff. Well, that's that's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah. Congratulations. So when you did finally get the For the Love of Money through Bone, mm-hmm. the royalties of that, then when Dre used it on his Compton album, how did that how did that work? Was it the same process or because of Bone, you automatically were in the system? To get- yeah, because of Bone, I was automatically in the system. Well, that's good. That's helpful. Yeah. So then how, when, and why did you move back to L.A. and then get get to be a grip? How did that happen? Um, well, I was I just got tired of Chicago. I was there long enough. and. Uh, when I got here, I met my, my wife and she's a producer. Uh, she produces promos for HBO. And so, you know, I started out as like a PA and, and just kind of worked my way up to being a grip, joining the union. Gotcha. And you met her doing work or met her? I met her actually on set because uh, one of the bros from Blood of Abraham became a director. And so I was on set with him and she was working like the location department on his. Uh, it was a, it was like a Cisco commercial for like Cisco systems. Um, she was working locations on that commercial. And that's how we met. Like you said, it's good to have good friends. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Congratulations on that too. Thank and you. then what uh, do you ever do you still write at all? Do you not care? Do you, what do you No, nah, I don't really write anymore, man, but you know, I like to, I, I, I make music. Okay. I definitely, you know, make beats if that's what you want to call it, you know, for sure. Well, what do you mean? Make beats. If that's what I want to call it, do you make beats. That's what you're saying. Well, but see the stuff that I make doesn't sound like, uh, you know, the beats that these kids are rapping to today. It's very it much old school. Hmm. Those, well, well, at least, at least those elements, those influences. Gotcha. So, it's and you know, you, I don't know if you knew that. You know, I had a podcast. I did about, se- I got about seven episodes uh, in 2018. Man, I had a podcast called Quality Control the Podcast. No, oh, no, I didn't it, know that. Yeah, interviewed Lonzo. Uh, uh, yeah, a couple people. It is still up. You can it's still, still watch. Go we'll check it out. I yeah, will. It's on YouTube. Yeah. I look forward to that. Yeah.
and I want you to listen real close to me. I'm going to ask you some real simple questions. And I want some real simple answers. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, I, I understand. You said that you couldn't have possibly been at the crime scene at 11.15 because you were in the bookstore buying my audio book and my hardcover book at 11.15 when the crime scene occurred in Soren's book. The history of gangster rap. So you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying the books. Right, right. At 11.15, I was, I was at the bookstore at, at 11.15 and when, when I, bought, I bought the books and accidentally left them at the store. So at 11.15, you couldn't have been at the crime scene because you were buying books, right? At, at 11 15 I was we we was when I was leaving it was, it was some people coming in and I, I, I forgot to grab but you, you you don't remember who what they look people, like what they look like or nothing right? no hmm. so at 12 15. You went to the bookstore buying my audio book and hardcover book and Soren's book at 12.15, so you couldn't have been at the scene because you were buying the books, right? Yeah, at 12, exactly, at 12, at 12.15, exactly, I was at the bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> now you see. You know you know fucked up. Which which one? First you said you were at the bookstore at eleven fifteen, and then you said you were twelve fifteen. You know you know fucked up. He fucked up. Yeah, he fucked up. He fucked up. Man, you you confusing me, man. So you get my book, my audio book. 40 years in Soren's book, History of Gangster Rap, and if you don't, you know you're not fucked up, right? Man, the more those cops ask me questions, the more I wish I bought them motherfucking books.